Hi, my name is Taylor Handy. And this is Kevin 101. I'm going to start out with a question. Does anyone know how many steers are born in the U.S. every year? Back there? Good job. It's a trick question. The answer is because, the reason is, uh, bulls and heifers are born, not steers. Steers are castrated males, and castration ha takes place after birth. But approximately, there are 50 million calves born in the U.S. every year. For cattle producers, calving season is one of the most challenging times of the year. Getting a live calf on the ground is a major factor impacting producers' profitability. Today, I will discuss the signs and process of parturition, possible complications, and the tools for successful calving season. Some signs of parturition, um, some that happen weeks before, are swollen udder and teats, the vulva becomes loose, and the cow starts spending more time alone, isolated from the herd. Lubrication of the birth canal is also seen. And then hours before the tail sticks straight out or at a slight bend, the cow becomes restless and uncomfortable, and they begin to nest or gather or paw at their bedding. Stages of labor. The first stage usually takes three for a cow and 72 hours for a first calf heifer. The ligaments of the pelvis and other bones and structures begin to relax. The cervix, vagina, and vulva dilate. The second stage, it usually lasts a half hour for a cow and three hours for a first calf heifer. And this is the appearance of the water bag. And no more than an hour should pass before being checked for complications after seeing the water bag. And then this is also the expulsion of the calf through the birth canal. The third stage, this is usually done within a few hours of labor, and this is the expulsion of the fetal membrane or placenta, which is also called the cleaning. So the order of birth, the water bag, which does not always apply. Sometimes the water bag comes after the calf. The two front hooves slash legs, the head and midsection, then the midsection of the calf's body, the rear end and back legs, and then the afterbirth, which is the placenta or cleanings. And this is what the normal presentation of the calf looks like in the cow. And some complications that can occur during birth is the membrane can cover a calf's nose or mouth, which then causes suffocation if it's not caught soon enough. Um, big calves are usually an issue for first calf heifers. And then twins, there are one to every 4,000 births. And then prolapse, a uterus is ex the uterus is expelled with the calf when the calf is born. And hip lock is the calf's hips get stuck in the cow's pelvis. And big calves and hip lock can result in a C-section. These are also some of the complications a cow can have. A up here is um, the one foreleg is retained, and B is the upward deviation of the head, and C is with the back down, and D is completely breech. Some of these you can push the calf back in and try and reposition yourself, and then others you have to call the vet, and sometimes you may lose a calf. And then after birth, the mother will get up and lick the calf clean, and then with one to two hours, the calf should be up on its feet and eat its first meal, which is called colostrum. Colostrum is the first secretion from the mammary glands after giving birth. And this is very rich in antibodies and very vital to life. Now I'm going to show you Kelsey's big day. Kelsey is a cow on our farm. And this is January 29th, 2012. This is her first calf. So this is Kelsey. As you can see, the udder and teats are swollen. And you can kind of see her tail is sticking straight out. And she's just kind of um, uncomfortable. And now you can see here is the, the hooves. And this is here is the vulva, like we were talking about earlier. Earlier, And this is Kelsey. Just She gets up and down, tries to move around a little bit. 
and repositions the cap and helps the process. Here are the, the front hooves once again. And see, she gets up and lays back down many times. and just helps her get more comfortable and helps move the calf and get it to move along a little bit more. Now you can see that the legs have, the front legs have come out a little bit more. And here in a second, we will see the head. There's the head. It's kind of hard to see, it's back in here. And then part of the body, the midsection. And this is the membrane I was talking about. So the membrane is covering the calf's face. You don't want that membrane to be on there for too long, otherwise they can suffocate. Sometimes the cows get tired and take a break, and you usually want the process to go along very quickly. So this is my dad. He goes in and pulls the calf the rest of the way out, makes sure the membrane is off of its face so it can breathe and have some air. And now we're going to pull the calf the rest of the way out and make sure he is okay. He's a big calf. And now you'll see the back legs and the hooves there. There they come. And check the sex is right after the birth. And usually the calf is wet. And um, this I don't think it was very cold on this day, but sometimes they're really cold. So the mom... Um, Kelsey licks the calf to make sure she's she trying to figure out what it is. It was her first time, so. So it was a boy. His name was Scooter, and Scooter weighed 83 pounds. Some of the do's and don'ts of calving. You do need to be gentle. Um, they can get very scared, and um, it's a little bit too hard on them to be rough. Um, you need to be clean, make sure you have clean hands, use clean tools, and you do need to be prepared. You need to have your tools handy and ready to go for when the time comes. And you do need to check the cow regularly for signs of parturition. And you need to check the cow's birth canal after the calf is delivered. You need to call the vet immediately if there are any tears or bleeding. And you need to make sure that the calf has at least two liters of colostrum as soon as um, after delivery as possible. Some of the don'ts, you don't want to wait too long to interfere. Wait only an half an hour after the water bag appears. You don't want to use such things as trucks or tractors to pull the calf. That can be really hard on the cow and probably do some damage. And you don't want to pull on the calf unless there are three parts of the body in the birth canal the two front feet, a head, and two hind feet, and a tail. You don't want to delay in calling the vet in difficult cases. Now we're going to go through some of the tools that would be helpful to have on hand at the time of birth. The first thing is OB chains. These can help in pulling the calf out if you, if you need to. This just goes around the calf's hoof like this on both sides and then you pull evenly to get the calf to come out. You need to have powdered colostrum and milk replacer in case of emergency. Um, say the mother doesn't take the calf, you need to have the milk replacer and colostrum. And then the, the bottle or the tube to feed the calf. Sometimes they don't suck and so then you have to use the tube going down their throat to feed them and make sure they stay alive. And then you also need to have a flashlight, especially um, at nighttime. A lot of calves come in the nights, so you need to make sure you can see. And then the cold weather, you need to have towels to go in and dry off the calf, and then a heater and a heat lamp to keep the calf warm. It is very important to have a warm calf. Um, they can very easily freeze to death in cold conditions. So in conclusion, to succeed as a cattle producer today, it is important to get the live calf on the ground. To reach this goal, you need to follow sign, the signs and process of parturition, how to handle possible complications, 
and to be prepared and have your tools ready as you have seen today. These are some of the resources I used. And thank you for watching today. I hope you guys learned something. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. Um, yeah, it is a good, that is a good, the question was, what was the weight? And that was a good weight for him. Um, if you get up in the 90s range, that is really hard on cows. So you need to have about, um, like, 80, in the 80s range somewhere. Any other questions? Yes. Um, the question was how um, do we have to assist the cow and do we usually have to call the vet? Um, there's only one case where we had to call the vet. Um, other times it's been pretty easy. We usually, the OB chains we don't even use that much. Um, sometimes we use them not very often. One case we did call the vet, the cow wasn't, very, wasn't healthy and she had to be put down until we had a C-section. So that was something that I got to experience on our farm. Any other questions? All right, thank you.